everyone, it's Maki. Do you like Movo suits related to the wind? Perhaps the high-speed Gundam Air Master, swift like the wind. The name of the Gundam area is derived from the name of a fairy, and the fairy area also possesses the ability to control winds and storms. Buster Gundam 2 was given the concept of storm when the TV show was aired. The mobile suit I am introducing today is this one. Its name is Talgy 3. It appears in Gundam Wing and Dress Waltz. The pilot belongs to the secret organization Preventer with the code name Wind. Sex Marquis, who went missing in the final battle depicted in the TV Ami, pulls it. Zex, who says he cannot assimilate into peace, aims to become the wind that extinguishes the flames of war with his skills. Let's explore the secrets of Talki 3, a mobile suit I am very fond of. Talki 3 was actually developed around the same time as Talki 2. However, the adjustment to its specialized equipment were delayed, and it wasn't completed in time for the final battle depicted in the TV Ami. After the end of the war, the secret organization Preventer discreetly retrieved and stole it. In the novel version, Lady In reveals that Talgi 3 was a mobile suit prepared by treats Kashraisha to be handed over to Zex Marquis. However, Zex received the Gundam Epion from here and the Sodi in Gundam Epion for the final battle in the TV Ami. Talki 3 actually has equipment that corresponds to a prototype of the Epion system installed. However, the details regarding this equipment remain unknown. A significant design difference is the Vulcan cannon mounted on its head. This is often explained as a result of analyzing the effectiveness of Vulcan cannons equipped on Gundam types. Additionally, the crest like part on the top of the head is enlarged and golden decorative parts are added. Due to the increased thickness of the armor in various parts, it has a slightly larger appearance than the previous Talgi models. The thrusters including the super vernier on the back are also enhanced displaying mobility surpassing Gundam Epion. When the limiter is released, Fix has commented that it is more difficult to control the Epion. On the other hand, the armor material used is titanium alloy, which was used in older mobile suits compared to Gundams utilizing gunnerium alloy and serpent using neo titanium alloy, a new material set to greatly surpass titanium alloy. It is a mobile suit that employs quite outdated armor. However, with sex, a skilled pilot on board, it plays a significant role in the story. I will discuss the details in the next section, but it is equipped with weapons including a heat rod, similar to the one equipped by Gundam Epion, and a mega cannon, said to have power comparable to Wing Gundam Zero's Twin Buster Rifle. Talki 3 embodies the features of the three major stars, Talki Gundam Epion and Wing Gundam Zero, in one. Preventer had completed and kept Talgi 3 dormant as a force to counter future threats. Lady in knew of Trix's death in the battle against the Gunners, and she also knew that Fix had gone missing. There are hardly any pirates in the world capable of operating Talgi. Perhaps Lady in had a premonition that Fix had survived. The era is after Colony 196. They can Barton and the Maui Misha army, with Maui Misha Kashurisha as their leader, stage an armed uprising as the world once again begins to move towards the tragedy of war. The wind visits Lady Yin. Let's discuss the weapons of Talki 3, equipment reminiscent of a storm quelling the spreading flames across the Earth's sphere. Firstly, the head-mounted Vulcan though not depicted in the series, it's often used in games, 
Street did not equip the Taoki with the Vulcan cannon. However, he designed its head to resemble Ganon's and equipped the Taoki Three with the characteristic Vulcan cannon of a Ganon. This is just my interpretation. But perhaps Street who admired Ganon's endowed each of the Taoki Two and Three with Ganon characteristics, envisioning them together on the battlefield as a Ganon-like entity. This is just my theory, not an official setting. What do you think? Next, the Bean Saber, its basic structure, is similar to the preceding Taogi. However, it's often said to have enhanced performance, equivalent to that of a Gunnan. In the series 6, is shown repairing the Wing Gunnan's Bean Saber, using parts from Taogi's left arm. Perhaps the day they collected in the scene were pride. The original Taugi used a beam saber made of conventional titanium alloy, less powerful compared to a Gunnam's. This limitation was depicted in the Ani, when it couldn't penetrate the armor of Gundam Hibiums. The beam saber of Taugi is free, however it destroys a serpent, armored with new titanium alloy quite the upgrade. As you can see, it carries two of these beam sabers on the back of its shield. Moreover, the shield contains a heat rod, identical to that of Gundam Epion, capable of cutting through mobile suit armor, and attacking in trajectory is different from beam sabers or beam cannons. It's extremely robust and, combined with Talki 3's power, can drag mobile suits on top of others. The heat rod can be stored inside the shield due to its seemingly unnatural extension. It is a feature often debated, much like the Ultron Gunnam's dragging hand. But it is cool, so it's within acceptable bounds. This retractable feature is often said to be absent in Gundam Epion. It's well known that this feature was added to the Endless Waltz version of Epion, however. The design of the TV version Epion's shield, capable of storing the heat rod, is actually featured in the official encyclopedia. Perhaps they reused a design that wasn't a pride in the TV series. Lastly, the Mega Cannon developed using data from the bait designed by Gundam engineers for us. It's a more potent weapon than the Dover gun originally equipped on Taki. It boasts excellent rapid fire capabilities and tremendous power, comparable to Wing Gundam Z Roost Wing Buster Rifle of maximum output. However, it wasn't equipped in the final battle, a point of much discussion. This is purely my interpretation. In a world on the brink of returning to war, Zex is not one to hold back. There is no reason for Zex not to use the Mega Cannon. In the final battle as explained earlier, the Mega Cannon is a weapon capable of being fired at the lower output. Let's consider why we didn't use Mega Cannon. Additionally, the metal used in Taki is free, and its armament isn't Gunnayam alloy, but the conventional titanium alloy. Gunnayam alloy used in Gunnams is exceptionally robust, enabling the use of powerful weapons like the Twin Buster Rifle. Perhaps the Mega Cannon, constructed with titanium alloy, reached its limit when it fired a beam comparable to the Twin Buster Rifle, rendering it unusable in the final battle. In the final battle, Nong incapacitates a serpent by destroying its legs with a beam rifle. Zex possessing skills equivalent to Nong's could have fought similarly with the regular Mega Cannon. Therefore, I believe the Mega Cannon wasn't unused in the final battle, but rather unusable of course. This is just one fan's interpretation. Now, let's delve into the exploits of Taoki 3. Deck embarked and aimed to execute the true Operation Meteor against Earth. The plan involved dropping a space colony on Earth and seizing control of the ensuing chaos. With a battalion of mobile suits, Dex Merquish joining the Colonel Preventers, 
and operating under the Kansai wind, launches a solo attack against the Maui Misha army. At this time, there's an impression that Taoki is free and left her Sakno Spear alone. But the novel version mentions the use of a cargo transport rocket. It likely detached from the rocket in a location undetected by the enemy and proceeded in Taoki U3 from there. Taoki U3 goes on to destroy ships carrying sovereigns one after another. The scenes of it slicing through spaceship armor are reminiscent of Gundam Epion's X who is taking down Maui Misha's forces one by one, points the mega cannon at the satellite, where Deccan Barton is located and recommends surrender. However, Deccan threatens Six by stating if you attack, I will immediately drop the space colony on us, thereby immobilizing Taki 3. Deccan's plans are thwarted by the efforts of Hiro Yui and others. Once Sex confirms the colony is secured, he uses the mega cannon at maximum output to destroy Deccan's resource satellite. However, Deccan narrowly escapes the satellite and descends to Earth. Having depleted its energy, Taoki 3 drifts through space. Rendez Busing with prevent unknown for resupply before heading to the final battle. Taoki is free, and Taurus engage in combat against an overwhelming number of serpents. Zex and Noin disarm the serpents and incapacitate the pirates without taking their lives. Their skills are highly praised by Gundam pilot cut to rubber of a winner. Zex hopes that the people witnessing their battle will rise for peace and heads into the desperate fight. His demeanor mirrors the image of Gundam once spoken of by Treats Kashuesho, who admired the unwavering spirit of Gundam standing up in any desperate battle, fighting alongside the assembled Gundams. Taoki 3 eventually runs out of energy and ammunition. As Sex and the others brace for death, when Gundam Zero appears overhead and attacks the shelter, where Dekim is holed up, the populace, having witnessed the battles of the Gundams, finally rises for the sake of peace and arm. They confront the Maui Misha army to achieve peace never yielding. Fighting through Taoki is freest out the desire for peace in people's hearts. It may very well have become a Gundam in this final moment. Have you been captivated? By the charm of Taoki 3, it truly is cool how this mobile suit inherits the characteristics of several units that were active in the TV army. Also, I absolutely love the development where the enemy, who fought the protagonist in the final battle, comes to aid as an ally. The aspect of not being equipped with the Zero system is also sophisticated. And cool, isn't it? You get the impression that Sex acts not by relying on machinery, but by his own will. It is unclear what happened to Taoki 3 after the final battle. Perhaps it was discarded, just like the other Gundams. It might be sealed and stored securely, just as it was before the uprising of the Mai Misha army. However, the closing narration of Endless World states as follows in the subsequent history. The existence of mobile suits including Gundams never appeared again. There's something I must tell you in the end. Far above your home, the Maui Misha army is about to declare war. The only unit capable of rushing to their hidden satellite and destroying it is Tokyo 3. Please hit the subscribe button. A hidden hangar in front of your house will open. Press the like button to activate Taoki 3 and take off into space lastly. Hit the bell button to release the maximum output of the mega cannon. There's only one chance. You're granted the Kansai wind. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then.